Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Now today I'm going to talk to you about a new look pattern that I've recently sewn. As you can see on my mannequin, it is a tracksuit top. Um, it's also the top that I had on in my last video when I showcased the fabric of the month for June. Now when I worked with this pattern there was a couple of changes that I did, some stuff that I wasn't too happy with and I really wanted to just touch on it, mention it so that if you are going to be sewing this pattern you already know to go and look out for um, the changes that I'm suggesting here. Now also looking at the new look and here it is a really really pretty athleisure wear pattern that we have. We've got the tracksuit top, we've got the tracksuit pants and as you can see and I'm going to bring in the line drawing you can see over there we've got these style lines now when I sew I love having style lines in my clothing I can go and top stitch it um, I just love it when it looks like that ready to wear that I'm seeing in the shops so that is also why I chose this I don't want a boxy tracksuit top now when I looked at the new look pattern my first thing that I always do I go to the back and I go and look at what fabric is suggested for it and they always have this and I'm going to turn it this way they have this little ruler printed on there and I've got to go and take my fabric and I'm going to measure the amount that they're telling me and it's from there to where that arrow point is and I then stretch it to make sure that I'm actually working with the same stretch as what they're recommending. Now they recommend a moderate stretch and when I measure or yeah I did go and measure this and calculate it this works out to about a 20-25% stretch that we've got on this little ruler that they're giving us. They're also saying at the suggested fabrics that it is a mod moderate stretch knit like your French Terry, your Pontiromas, your tracksuit fabric. Um, it's also telling you your um, sweatshirt fleece as well and we know we have like sweatshirt fleece and that we don't have a lot of stretch in that fabric so perfect for this pattern. But the fabric that I wanted to use was our fabric for June and that does have more stretch to it. I've got about a 35% to a 40% stretch on this. So already this is telling me that I have to size down on this pattern otherwise it is going to be too big for me. I've got way more stretch than what they are suggesting. Now if you are a new dressmaker or a beginner sewer remember it's always important to make sure what the ease is in that pattern. If I'm working with woven fabrics I want more ease so that I can move in the garment. Now with stretch fabrics it is more forgiving. So there I can get away if I am maybe slightly off on the ease but um, most of the time I would say by looking at my pattern at the finished pattern that is guiding me on what that finished measurement is when I choose it I really don't have any hiccups with that but I must say if I was slightly off let's say on the sleeve being a slightly tighter fit because of the give of the fabric I'm going to be okay with it. Now let's have a quick look at our pattern piece that I have in front of me. This is my front pattern piece. Now the finished measurements of these patterns are usually on the front and I always just zoom into those front pattern pieces and there you can see it is giving me finished pattern measurements. Now when I choose my size I go and look at the body measurement that they give me and they are suggesting I've got to be a certain size. I would go then and look at the size they suggested and see what ease is included. I then go and decide, no, it's too much ease, too little ease, I want to go maybe a size up or a size down. That is just how I'm working. In a previous video that I did as well, I do go more into detail on how I calculate the ease. I think it was the Cotigan that I did a couple of videos back, so go and have a look at that. So once my size is chosen, then I go to the pattern and I must say I really didn't do a lot of changes on here for myself because it is a slightly looser fit. I chose the size so that I've got a bit more um, ease in it so that I can wear a long sleeve t-shirt for winter underneath that. So um, 
most of my changes really was style changes because I didn't like the color that they've done. But the rest was really very forgiving. I didn't go and do any other changes. Now looking at length, and I'm just bringing this pattern in again. If we look at the model that's wearing this, you can see that it's actually hitting her about at, uh, I would say just above low hip. It's between low hip and high hip where it's hitting her. It is above the crotch line. Now the pattern that I made, I made it as is. I didn't go and shorten or lengthen it because I wanted that extra length to, um, because I'm wearing it with my yoga pants. So I wanted to cover my bottom as well. So for me that worked, but the next one that I'm making, which is going to be wearing with my jeans, I do want to go and look at going short on this. I'm five foot two and this length was really very, very long on me. It's definitely not hitting me there. It is hitting me about on that area. Now to shorten it, you are going to go and look for your lengthen or shorten lines. And I've only got two pattern pieces out here to show you, but if I go to this back pattern piece where that lengthen or shorten is, and I must say I prefer working first on the back pattern and then taking it over to my front pattern. So my measurement will always be my back length to my waist that I need. So all you're going to do really on this, if you are shortening it, you can go and you're just going to fold out the amount that you need to take out. So if I am wanting to take out, let's say three centimeters, then I will make sure that I go above this waistline or above this line where it says lengthen or shorten. I would go and draw my three centimeters. You can even go one and a half above, one and a half below, however you want to do it. But that is then how you're going to measure and take out the um, that amount of pattern that you're not going to need. That's going to be too long on your body. And then also if you are going to need to lengthen, you'll cut on this and you will open it up. Now, that is really one thing I'm going to stress. Go we'll look at that length. Otherwise, once you've sewn it and you want to maybe shorten it because of the pocket detail that I have here and being stitched, um, top stitch already, I can't go and shorten it now. Because when I've got to shorten, I've got to shorten from the hem level and that affects the pocket that I have on here. So really important, go and check that length before you start. Now, the next thing that I really didn't like was their collar. Um, I must say that I did try their pattern piece. I did have enough fabric so that I could cut it out and try and see what it looks like. And I'm just going to get the instruction sheet again. So you can see with their collar, they go and they gather in at that center back and they gather in at the front where it's going to be overlapping as well. Now there is a lot of fabric that I've got to, got to gather in. And if I'm working with a fleecy type fabric, for me it's just too bulky I really didn't like it so this is something I want you to take note of if you look at the pattern piece here you'll see that I've got a line here that says fold line and I've got that part of my pattern now all this excess here must be gathered in to fit into this section so I'm gathering in basically from below that fold line to here and I'm also going to be gathering in on that section so that when I'm folding my fabric and I'm just going to turn it this way so you can see so when I am folding this on the fold line this section must actually match this um, area that I have there and it must also match the uh, say it must be the same measurement that I have over there now we're sitting with all this excess fabric here in the center for me working with my fabric no matter how I try to fold it no matter what I did I was pressing everything when I pin it, it just doesn't stay in place. And then I've got this beautiful finish on these areas, bringing it in. And then I've got all this excess fabric sitting around my neck. So for me, this was really not a good pattern piece. And I decided to go to my trusted cowl style finish that I do love. Now I'm going to show you how to change this pattern for if you still want to do that crossover and then I'm going to talk you through what I did with my cowl, um, that cowl neck that I've also done on the pattern. Now first off let's look at our pattern piece. I really if I want to do a crossover style and I'm, I'm going to turn it this way so it's closer to me. So when I am wanting that crossover style, I really just want this width of the pattern. I don't want any excess. So what I did, I went and I copied 
from that fold line and I copied my pattern all the way around and I had extra of my white trace that I'm using as well so once I've traced it and I'm just putting it here I'm going to fold it in half so you can see there's that fold line I went and I copied it and then with my extra white trace that I still had all I did is I folded this down and I went and I cut out on the lines that I've drawn and that has given me my pattern piece now with this pattern they've got seam allowance on that center back because they want you to first gather it in and then you sew the center backs together so again there's a lot of bulk happening in this area so when I did my pattern piece I did it up to that size that I was using but I want to cut it on a fold so I go back my one and a half centimeters or my five eighths of an inch which is the seam allowance that we have included in this pattern and I just drew that line over there now I can then go and write on the place on fold I can go cut this off or if I might at another stage want to do a seam I can decide to just go fold this in and place it on my fabric on the fold now I did do a sample here just to show you what this pattern piece then looks like and this really will give us a beautiful neckline with this pattern so you can see I have cut it on fold and I'm just going to let's open it up so you can visualize and see what I've done so this is just one of my scrap pieces that I'm working with but if you look at this now and I'm going to place it like this I had this on the fold line and I just went and I cut out my pattern piece then I went to my pressing board folded it in half and I just press that so that I know I've got it perfectly folded in half then your next step will be to bring this over this is going to be the crossover and here let's just go to the drawing this section that you're seeing over there is the one that will be basically going onto that side of the neckline and then when I'm bringing this one over there that is the one that's lapped underneath and that's going to be on that section so when I'm going to be lapping this over each other or crossing it over I want to make sure that this short edge that I have will line up to my longer edge there and then this short edge that I have will be lining up to that edge over there so I will place it in position I'll pin it and I will go and baste it now the collar is then done all I have to do is to go and look at my instructions sheet go and pin it in place and go and sew it so if you want that crossover look take your pattern piece go and make those changes for yourself um, I'm really wary of using this pattern as it is I've really tried it didn't work for me now the next option that I had was to go and do this cowl neckline finish I love that finish and for me it is giving me lovely detail around the neck but it's not up against my neck that I'm feeling that it's strangling me so for me this really works well I do a lot of tops with that sort of finish now after I sewed my top all I did I went and I measured this neckline and I just fold it on my table and I go and measure it we actually only need half of that full neckline measurement my full neckline was 60 centimeters so half of that is 30 centimeters because I'm only going to be working on half a pattern now I'm just bringing my pattern piece in here and I just wanted to fold it like this so that you can see again what that pattern piece will look like when it's folded you can see there's my fold line so I've got a beautiful finish happening on this neck area now what you do you take your measurement that half a measurement so mine was 30 centimeters you are going to measure your neckline because whatever size you are doing will determine what that neckline size is going to be so all I did I my first line that I draw is my fold line and you can see I made a mark there that is my 30 centimeters I haven't added any seam allowances or anything like that for me I love doing my pattern work without seam allowance and once I've done that pack pattern work then I will go add my seam allowance so that was my first line that I did I then decided how much do I want on this area how much do I want it to fold over if you look at the width that I have over there I've got to give enough to allow for it to actually roll over to the outside so I worked with I think about uh, 
I think it was about 21, 22 centimeters. So what I did then from this line, I went and I measured up to that line. I drew myself a line and I marked my 30 centimeters. And then I also did it to the side of the fold line. And again, that is my 30 centimeters. Now you can go and just do a straight line down, but because I chose to have a slightly wider finish, I wanted more fabric to roll to the outside. I find if I just go with a straight line that I do get a pull where that, where that roll of the fabric is. Uh, and I'm just going to pull a little bit there. I do get a bit of a pull happening this way. So I don't like that. I really wanted to have more ease here. But I am cutting on the fold. So where do I go and add that ease? Where I've got my seam that I'm going to be sewing. So all I've done over here on that fold line, I've just gone and I measured out I did about five centimeters, uh, which is about two inches or maybe just less than that. So um, I went and I just made a mark for myself. And then from that mark, I went down to where my 30 centimeter mark is on this line and on that line. So that is really all I did. I wanted the slight angle happening. So once I wear this, obviously this pulls back to my neck creating that extra ease at that center front where I really wanted to be more relaxed. I didn't want it to be pulling tight on that area. Now you can see here as well, after my pattern work is done, I go and I add my seam allowance. Now I've done my one and a half or five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now you'll note that I didn't go and do any seam allowance there. When I sewed this, I actually gave myself enough width so that I didn't have to worry too much about seam allowance there. Um, what you can do is go and add seam allowance for yourself on those edges as well. Now when you're cutting it out, again this is going to be on the fold of the fabric and you're just going to cut all the way around. Now when you're sewing it as well, you are going to sew your two pieces or those two seams together and you're sewing up to that center point, you're going to put your needle down, you're going to turn the fabric and you're going to sew down for me to that area. And then once it's done and you've pressed that seam, all you're going to do is really just take your fabric again, you're going to fold it in half on the fold line that we've created and go and press it. Once that's pressed, go and pin it to your top and you sew it on. But once I've sewn this, I've also gone and I've done a bit of top stitching. I've done top stitching all over this um, tracksuit top because I do love highlighting those style lines. For me, it just makes it look, I don't know, more designer if I can put it that way. But um, that is what I've done with that top. It is such an easy sew. I really didn't have to worry about um, too much detail. There's no zips, there's no buttons. The pocket detail for me is beautiful. Look at that photo and you'll see I've done top stitching all over this po pocket as well. So that is it for today's video. I really hope that the tips that I've shared for working with this pattern is going to help you. Remember, we always have to consider our fabric and also see how will it react with the pattern that we have in front of us. If it's not going to work with that pattern, go make the changes. We are free to go and do whatever style we like. Go and make the changes like I've done with this neckline. At the end of the day, you're sewing for yourself and you can break the rules if you want to. So you must have a lovely rest of the day. I'll be chatting to you again in the next upcoming video.